Thanks very much to the Institute and to, uh, to Joe Curtin in particular for organising the event here today, um, which I think already this morning, having listened to the, to, to the contributors, um, has moved the debate forward in, in the sense that I think you see uh, something of uh, a form formulation of, of, of a coherent uh, policy or way forward. I think there, there is a certain amount of agreement amongst the speakers already this morning, and I think that, that is, is, to, is to be welcomed. And hopefully we and I as a farmer in particular, I think there's only one or two farmers speaking here today, uh, that we can play our part and certainly uh, within the IFA, uh, that is our whole approach uh, to this issue. Um, over the past number of years, we have set up uh, a number of new uh, committees and working groups to deal with the issue. Uh, include, including uh, alternative land use uh, working groups, and indeed the climate change working group, which uh, which I, uh, I I head up. Um, I suppose setting the context, and I think a lot of that has already been done this morning. I don't propose uh, going going over a lot of that. Obviously, we have the scientific and political context, um, and the climate change and, and agriculture, our present position. A lot of that has been covered. The next steps, which I think is is the most important area. And farmers uh, delivering renewable energy, uh, which, which, which certainly is where we're pinning uh, a lot of our colours, and obviously the conclusions. The scientific and political context, um, you know, the, the IPCC, uh, as has been stated already this morning, uh, that global warming is un unequivocal. And, you know, if you could speak to, to as many scientists as you like, uh, get as many differing views as you like on both sides of the argument. But I think that is there, it's a, it's a statement, it's an accepted fact at this stage, and I think there's very little to be gained by, by wasting time and, and, and arguing that. And climate change, uh, the biggest challenge facing humanity, uh, Minister John Gormley, and uh, I think that certainly is, is, is a, a big statement, uh, but it's certainly a, a major challenge, and I think it's one that we, that we have to face up to, and uh, something that's, that obviously uh, John Gormley and myself uh, agree with. And just, the other side of the thing, uh, former Spanish Prime Minister Eisenhower uh, dismissing climate change as a new religion and drawing hundreds of billions of euros at a time of economic crisis. I suppose that might have some resonance uh, at, 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 at the present point in time, uh, but I think, you know, dismissing something uh, out of order just because it costs money in the short term obviously isn't the correct, uh, the, the correct uh, approach. Uh, but having said that, uh, there is no point in creating an industry for the sake of itself. I think whatever action takes place needs to be part of a joined up approach and hopefully, uh, you know, coming from conferences like this, and indeed I'm delighted to see so many members of, of both the Agriculture Committee in the Dáil and the Climate Change Committee, your, your own committee chairman, uh, here today, and hopefully that we will be able to, to take a, a, a joined up and sensible practical approach along the lines of which Michael Barry and others have, have, have been talking about already this morning. Um, Going back to Hayden and the, the New Zealand approach, which is, you know, we're, we're, we're the it's the closest country to our own in terms, in terms of agricultural output. And, you know, a plan has been put in place, which is what has to be done. I think the time scale of that plan, and, you know, you, you, you see targets changing in, in terms of different <coughs> economic times. Those uh, quotes uh, from New Zealand, both in, in, in Poznan and, and, and indeed the new program for government, uh, emphasize the need that. You have an overall approach, the time scale of which must be achievable. It's no use having targets if those are not going to be achievable and, and be practical in the long term. The sector emission, emission changes, we have went through all of those. Just the one point, uh, since 1990, agriculture is the one area that has reduced its emissions. And I think that's sometimes lost when you, when you look at the overall contribution of agriculture uh, to, uh, to, to, to the level of, of, of emissions. Uh, specifically because of policies and work and, and efficiencies taking, uh, being entered into by farmers, backed by the research uh, by the likes of, of Professor Jerry Boyle and Tagisk. Um, the accounting met methodology has been referred to already. We certainly have major problems with that. Um, you know, the energy and transport sectors, areas that have, have major problems as regards emissions, they currently benefit uh, from the, the, the greenhouse gas emission reductions carried out by farmers in terms of renewable energy. 
And I suppose the other aspect of that, we don't receive the carbon credit uh, for carbon sequestration from forestry, soil, and indeed grassland, which is something uh, in this country is a major resource and certainly isn't being uh, taken into account at present. The present position, our, 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 our own emissions and so forth, that I think has already been covered. Just some of the things that, ha that have been carried out, the reduction in the age of slaughter of our cattle, which means they're around uh, more, more efficient weight gain. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, that, that has reduced uh, from 44% of cattle uh, being over 30 months of age at the time of slaughter in 1990, down to 15% at, 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 at the present point in time. Due to efficiencies and indeed policies, as, as uh, Michael Hamill has referred to already, uh, in dairy production, I think Michael Barry referred to that, uh, increased efficiency, uh, reduced emissions due to more efficient production uh, per, per, per kilo of milk. Obviously, the next steps, methane abatement. I think that's going to be referred to uh, at, at, uh, by other speakers late, later in the day. Nitrous oxide abatement, carbon sequestration, and uh, renewable energy production. In terms of methane abatement, um, look, I think that's going to be referred to later in the day uh, by the speakers from, 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 from Keenan's. A lot of research being carried out by UCD, uh, UCC, TAGISC, and the Department of Agriculture and so forth. And I think, uh, you know, research has been referred to here already. And I think the figure that, uh, uh, that, that Hayden referred to there of 175 million being invested in research is something, uh, you know, that we here in this country can take, uh, um, uh, take note of. Uh, in times of economic crisis, uh, you know, research is often one of the first things that, that, that is hit. And I think the work that, that has been done, done in Tagusk, uh, you know, and I think Tagusk bud budget was cut late uh, in, in the last budget, that's something to bear in mind. Uh, you know, you don't cut off your nose to spite your, your face. Uh, Short-term gain, I think, uh, is something that, that, uh, that, that uh, has, to be, has to be avoided. Um, in terms of nitrous oxide abatement, and, and uh, Hayden referred to what is, work has been carried out in New Zealand, and indeed has been carried out uh, in Johnstown Castle by Tagusk in terms of nitrification in urease inhibitor. And carbon sequestration, I think that, uh, that, 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 that work in terms of uh, our, our production being uh, primarily grass-based systems, which is very effective environmentally, obviously, uh, uh, produce electricity for their own use, number one, and where they might be able to sell off the excess uh, to, uh, to the national grid. And we feel that if this initiative is taken on board, uh, that, that this could mean a reduction of 2 million tonnes of CO2 equivalent over the expected, expected life service of the turbines, which would be 20 years. Obviously, policy measures are needed to make this happen, and we have been talking to Minister Eamon Ryan on this, and I think we've had a positive response, but hopefully there will be uh, policy initiatives over, over the next number of weeks on that. Central to this, similar to the rest of Europe, a targeted refit tariff of, uh, of 22 cents per kilowatt hour, um, a doubling of the capital, capital reliefs uh, on, on 6,000 units, something that has been done in the minister's own constituency in, in terms of, of smart metering and net metering. These are essential uh, for the flow of electricity to go in and out. And the removal of the application fee for grid connection, a major capital cost which we feel you know, stymies the, uh, the, 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 the whole uh, issue before it even gets, uh, get, gets moving. Uh, education and research already referred to there. Uh, and to get an interest amongst this, uh, in this amongst farmers, apart from our own initiatives, we feel that there should be a provision of 100% grant aid to establish eight uh, wind microenergy units in the country and four microsolar units. Uh, allied to two small anaerobic digestion units, uh, which we feel uh, would provide a major, uh, a major impetus uh, in each of the provinces uh, going forward. That's something that we feel uh, we can contribute, uh, you know, the changing of, of land use, maybe moving away from your conventional farming, but it's something that has supplemented uh, incomes uh, throughout the rest of Europe. The technology is there. Why are we standing back uh, a country? But one thing we are, we're not short of is, uh, is wind. Some might say we are, we're not short of hot air either. But, uh, you know, it, it's certainly it, it, it's a contribution that we can make. Um, we have our forestry representatives here uh, as well today, as, as well as our president, Padraig Walsh, our forestry chairman, Pat Hennessy, and indeed JJ Kavanagh, uh, who is chairman of, of our alternative land use uh, committee, are here today as well. But forestry, uh, we have 730,000 hectares of forestry in Ireland. 42% uh, of that is managed by the private sector. 
And almost all of the, uh, the new planting undertaken over, over, over the last number of years is done by the private sector, mainly farmers. And I think, you know, when you consider that there's only 10% of the land area uh, in Ireland covered by forestry compared to 30% throughout the rest of Europe, you see where we are uh, in relation to, to other countries and maybe what needs to be done uh, to promote uh, this major carbon sink. Um, it's estimated that the total annual energy production of pulpwood, sawmill mill residues and harvestable for forestable residues is approximately 2.5 million green tonnes. Um, and the total energy potential is expected to rise to, to 3.5 by, by 2015. Obviously, uh, the value of, the, of, of this product will, will be uh, uh, determined by, by, market, by the energy market. But if this potential of 3.5 million tonnes is realised, it could be used for heat supply, which is one option, and, and this would save uh, over 1 million tonnes of CO2 emissions per year increasing to as much as 3 million tonnes by, by 2015. That's by a straight substitution. Um, or alternatively, be used for electricity generation, uh, you know, increasing to over four, 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 uh, 400 megawatts of, of, of electricity by 2015. The policy measures to make, required to make this happen, a recommitment to the, to the, to the growing uh, and, and deforestation targets uh, with a, an annual target of 10,000 hectares, the removal of the replanting obligation, which is something that uh, stops an awful lot of farmers putting land into forestry production. Not alone are they sterilizing that land uh, you know, in their own generation. As the years go on, future generations, that land has to go back into forestry uh, uh, generation after generation. Something that in practice would probably happen anyway, but farmers do not want to make that commitment for the next generation. Uh, the introduction of, of uh, an environmental service payment uh, of 250 euro per, hec per hectare and increase that uh, somewhat for broadleaves, which have the uh, obvious uh, increased, increased benefits. Uh, a biomass mobilisation programme to have the supply chain from one link to the other. And I think that's when you go to Scandinavia and other countries, you see there's a complete joined up thinking in terms of their planning. All the stages are, are interlinked. And I think that's maybe something that, that this conference and others could do. Have a joined up approach and not have different sectors working, off in the, in, 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 working alone in, the, in their own little niches and very little connection there because I think that, that is a problem in terms of the, of the, of, of the Irish approach. And a public sector heat, uh, heat fuel conversion program. Uh, you know, some of the private, uh, some private companies have taken this on board, but I think in all our public buildings, we should be taking the lead on this and I think that's, you know, at, at, at a ministerial level is something that we, uh, we certainly should, should be taking on board. In terms of renewable transport, uh, we should be establishing a first generation biofuel industry in Ireland. Now some would say first generation is, is a thing of the past, uh, but uh, certainly we feel that in order to take on board the benefits of, of second generation biofuel, we have to have a first generation there first. And I think that's probably where we're, we're falling down a, a little somewhat. So I think, you know, uh, uh, two, maybe two, two plants uh, within the country would certainly be, be very beneficial and incorporating the use of biomass uh, in the production of uh, bio, bioenergy. The policy measures here again, the increase in the, in the national uh, energy crop payment to 125 uh, euros per hectare, that was cut, uh, cut recently by the EU. We feel that that was brought up to, to the pre-existing level. The incentivization would once again be there. Uh, the introduction of a use it or lose it clause for, for the, recip the recipients of, of, of the motor exercise relief on biofuels and reallocate uh, uh, this to companies capable of producing indigenous transport biofuels because, you know, it, it's no use in, importing uh, a, a raw material uh, for, uh, for, for production. I think we have to look at the indigenous, in the indigenous, indigenous sector. Um, introduce targeted motor schemes in, in relation to the pure plant vegetable oil sector and incentives in the, in the HGV sector, which are the, which are the big users in relation to this. In conclusion, I suppose just referring back to the Mailcraft report in 2008, we ourselves, I suppose, we're somewhat isolated or, or insulated, I should say, isolated and maybe in others, uh, insulated in terms of the effects of climate change on Ireland in particular. Uh, but our response to climate change must be considered in, in the context, as has been said already by, by Michael and Hayden uh, and others, increased global food demand, uh, our 6.8 billion food and farming export industry, um, and obviously, methane and nitrous oxide abatement research needs to become a reality and applicable. 
Obviously, land use, land use change, and forestry need to be accounted for in agriculture in the IPCC accounting system. And emissions reductions need to be attribute, attributed to the source sector. That's central uh, to agriculture, because this is where we can make most of our contribution, and it needs to be attributed to agriculture. Uh, I suppose targets are there, they're, 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 I suppose, there to focus the mind. That's fine. <coughs> but I think laying down specific targets uh, to specific sectors definitely doesn't help. And I think that flexibility uh, that Michael Hamill referred to earlier in, in, in his presentation uh, is helpful in that, that the decision-making process lies in, in, in a large, in large respect to our own national government. And that government must deliver the policy measures and, and to allow a vibrant rural renewable energy sector to emerge and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and generate thousands of green collar jobs. And just a, a quote there that Irish, from Minister Brendan Smith, which is welcome that Irish beef would simply be replaced on world markets uh, by beef produced in a much, much less sustainable way if the national herd was, was to be cut. And I think that's, uh, I suppose, maybe has been central to a lot of maybe the comment that, that has come from farm organisations and, and interest groups that we have the most sustainable beef production system in, in the world. And I think it maybe is the most welcome aspect of the, at the very beginning of, of, the, of the conference today. Uh, and I certainly, I think in my next presentation, wherever and whenever that may be, I think one of the, one of the first quotes I will have, I think, is, is the quote by the minister here today, you know, taking the, I suppose, the elephant on the room uh, on, he, head on and, you know, stating that Ireland's climate change policy uh, in relation to agriculture in, in the future will certainly be underpinned, I think, by the notion that the reduction of the national herd uh, certainly is not the starting point. And I think that's a very welcome, I think, very welcome approach. And certainly, uh, I'm sure the president uh, at, at the rear of the room of the IFA, Patrick Walsh, and ourselves, if, if that is the basis going forward, we will be doing everything in our power. We believe we have certain proposals here, both, uh, I think, both to John Gormley and to, and to Eamon Ryan and Brendan Smith, which can move the debate, not just the debate, but actions on if the required incentivization is put in place. And I think the one thing you can say about Irish farming uh, is if there is an incentive there, if there is an opportunity there, farmers will take that on. And that's, that, I think, should be the cornerstone of, of uh, certainly national policy going forward uh, and, indeed, EU policy. And we, we certainly won't be found wanting. Thank you. Thank you very much.